So in this game, we need to revise rounding. Um, and we're going to round to the nearest 10. I've just rolled the dice and you can, I've got a four and a two. I can use this number either as a 42 or a 24. So as a 24, I will round down to 20 or up to 30. Now, to make it easy for ourselves, it's always best to find the midway point because we know that, and that would be 25. And we should clearly be able to see now where 24 sits. So 24 would sit about here, and we know we are going to round down to 20. If, however, I use the number as 42, I would need to round down to 40 or up to 50. Again, I'm going to find the midway point, which is 45. And then looking at my number, I can clearly see 42 would be placed about here. And I would round down to 40. Rolled again. And this time I've got a 2 and a 5. So I can use this as 25 or 52. If I start with 25, oops, 10. 25, I can round down to 20 or up to 30. Now we find the midway point, which is in fact our number of 25. And this is what we need to remember. When we end with a five, we always round up. So 25 would be rounded up to 30. So all you need for this game is the reasoned rounding sheet, which you can download from the link that we'll put in the description. Uh, two colour pencils or felt tips and two zero to nine dice. It is important that they have the zero. If you don't have zero to nine dice at home, don't worry, there are virtual dice again that we will link in the description below that you can use. So the aim of the game is to win the board by conquering more circles than your opponent. So there are 11 circles in total, so the first person to win six circles wins the game. Okay, so I'm going to go first and I've rolled my dice and I have got a seven and a zero so um, I could use this as 70 or I could use this as seven I'm actually going to use this as 70 so I am going to write the number in here this one doesn't need any rounding and make that half of my circle so Mercedes had a nice easy one there let's see what I get so I've got a six and an eight so I could either use that as 68 or 86. So if I use it as 68, that would round up to 70. If I use it as 86, that would round up to 90. I could put 86 in here and win half a circle, but that's not much use to me. If I'm the second person to put a number in the circle, that means I win it. So I'm going to take this opportunity to win this circle. So I'll put my 68 in there with my initials. And I'm going to circle that in my colour to show that I have won that circle. Okay, so it's my turn. And I have rolled a 2 and a 9. So I can use this as 92 or 29. So I am going to use this as 92. And I'm going to round down to 90 and take this top part of this circle. Okay. Ooh, flying dice there. So I've got an 8 and a 3. So I could either do 38 or 83. So if I was to do 83, it would round down to 80, which would go in this circle. There's nothing there yet. If I was to do 38, it would round up to 40, which would go in this circle. So there's no advantage in this case. I'm not going to use Miss Innes' colour. I don't want to give her an extra point. Uh, but I think I'm going to just start filling in the top row for fun. So I'll put 38 in the round into 40 circle. Okay, so my go. I have got here um, a 2 and a 1. So I can have 21 or 12. So if I round 21 down, that would give me this um, part of this circle, or if I have 12, I would be rounding down to 10, which would give me oops, this um, part of this circle. So I'm going to have 12 and mark there. 
So I've just rolled a zero and a three, and this is a great time to show you how to win this tricky zero circle. This is tricky to win because obviously five and above is going to round to 10. So you not only need to roll a zero, but your second digit needs to be four or less in order to get a number that could round to zero. So this is very fortunate to me, so I'm gonna take the opportunity to view this zero three as a three, which would round down to zero. So. so, Miss Innes and I just carried on playing the game, rolling our dice and taking circles where we could. So I've just rolled um, a seven and a four. So it could be 74 or 47. So if I look at 47, unfortunately, um, Miss Norman has already taken that, so I can't put it there. So I'll have to use it as a 74. 74 would round down to 70, but unfortunately she's also got that circle as well. So I miss a go. Hopefully I can take advantage of Miss Innes having to miss a go there. Let's see what the dice have in store for me. I'm on four circles, so I need two more to win. 61 or 16. So I can't do 61, because that would round to 60. I can do 16, which would round up to 20. So that's my fifth circle, so I only need one more to win. <laughs> Right, so I have just rolled a zero and a six. Can't use it as the 60 because that circle is taken, but six as a single digit would round up to 10. So I'm gonna be brutal here and snap up that final circle. So now you can see I've got one, two, three, four, five, six out of the 11 circles. Miss Innes can't come back from that. So I would have won this game. At this point, you can either play again using the extra boards you have here, or you can challenge yourself with one of the extensions that we're gonna show you now. So there's two ways that you can extend this game if you want more challenge. Okay, one way is to add in an extra dice, and instead of rounding to 10, you can round to the nearest 100. And remember, if you're rounding to the nearest 100, you would look at the tens digit to determine whether you round up or down rather than the units. The other way is to still use two dice, but to look at rounding decimals to the nearest whole number. And that's what I'm gonna model now for you. So I've rolled a one and a six. So I could either use this as 1.6 or 6.1. In both situations, I need to think what whole numbers this decimal lies between. So 1.6, 0.6 is part of a whole. So we've got one whole and a bit extra. So it would lie in between one and the next whole number, which is two. Just as Miss Innes did, I'm going to mark the halfway point, which is 1.5, and then I'm gonna add on my number, 1.6, which would be just beyond that. And I can then clearly see that it's closer to the whole number two. 
If, however, I had my 6.1, I've got six holes and one tenth, so six and a little bit extra. So it would lie somewhere in between six and the next hole number seven. Again, I'll mark my halfway point, which is 6.5, and then add on where I think my number would go. On a number line, you can immediately see much closer to six, so 6.1 would round down to six. So if you are going to have a go at one of those extensions I just showed you, it's very easy to adapt the board for those games. So if you're wanting to round to 100 and use three dice, all you need to do is turn these multiples of 10 into multiples of 100, as I've done here. If you want to play the decimals game for even more challenge, all you need to do is divide each of these numbers by 10. So you've got single digits. So I'm going to show you one example roll from each of these games so you can see that it's exactly the same. So if I'm using three dice here, oh, nearly escaped. So I've got a zero, a seven, or an eight. Now you've got more options in terms of how you use these numbers for this extension. So it could be 780, it could be 870, it could even be 87, or 78, it could be 708, 807. So you've got to think a lot more about what number you're going to choose. So I'm going to choose 708. Now we're rounding to the nearest 100, so we're looking at the tens digit to know if it's going to round up or down. So it's going to be between 700 and 800, so it's either going to go in the 700 circle or the 800 circle. So because we've got no tens, that would round down. So just as we did in the other game, I would put 708 and my initials in here. And for the decimals, it's exactly the same. Okay, we roll two dice and then we choose, this could either be 3.4 or it could be 4.3. So if it was 3.4, it would lie between three and four, and it would round down to three. So it would go in the three circle. If it was 4.3, it would round down to four, so it would go in the four circle, like so. The rules of the game do not change. The aim and objectives are all the same. This is a preview of the mathematics task you have been set. So hopefully the game we've just shown you will um, help you either practice doing this beforehand or as an extension afterwards. So we hope you enjoy the game and have lots of fun.